Hello. Welcome to the English Language Program's Training of Trainers Certificate Ceremony. We are so delighted to have all of you here, this incredible community of TESOL educators and fellow and specialist alumni. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank you for participating in this Training of Trainers course. And we also wanted to celebrate your achievements in completing it. And for this very special occasion, we have a very special guest. I would like to introduce you to Joe Bookbinder. Joseph Bookbinder began working as the director of the Office of English Language Programs in August of 2017. Mr. Bookbinder joined the Foreign Service in 1992 and is a member of the Senior Foreign Service. He's had overseas assignments in New Delhi, Chengdu, Beijing, Hong Kong, and Taipei. Before joining the Foreign Service, Mr. Bookbinder worked at Harvard Magazine and subsequently taught English and American history at two universities in China from 1986 to 1988. Mr. Bookbinder was born on Long Island, um, New York, and he graduated from Harvard University with a bachelor's degree with honors in history. Mr. Bookbinder speaks Chinese and French, and he and his wife, Min, have two sons. Welcome, Joe. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Jenny. Now everybody knows how old I am, which is a scary concept, but let me say good afternoon and welcome, esteemed fellow and specialist alumni. I'm so delighted to be here today with you to celebrate your achievement in completing the very first English language programs training of trainers course. As you know, this program was originally designed for new, for new English language fellows to help them prepare themselves as teacher trainers in their countries of assignment. Who could have predicted that a global pandemic would not only change all of our plans for the fellow program, but would also change our plans for this course? Still, they say every cloud has a silver lining, and we are so very grateful that such an incredibly sophisticated group of fellow and specialist alumni have been able to participate in and help us pilot this course. We're relying heavily on your feedback to make this course even better for new fellows. Over the years, we've enjoyed getting to know you working with you, and learning about all you've done in your country of assignment. You each have a unique story, skill set, and contribution that has made our terrific program even better. We know that English language fellows and specialist alumni are some of the most dedicated and experienced teachers and teacher educators in our field. Despite your already very impressive resumes and busy schedules, you took the time to continue your learning and support the fellow and specialist community. And thank you for that. We appreciate the ways in which you have joined together as part of this exceptional community, strengthening your ties to each other discovering new commonalities, gaining new perspectives on the profession from almost every corner of the world, and we hope further developing your knowledge and expertise so that you are even more effective as teacher trainers. We congratulate you on completing the course and hope that you will be able to display your certificate with pride, knowing that you are all members of this elite group. So once again, let me thank you and congratulate you. Okay. Thank you, Joe, for those words. Um, I'm Ruth Good. I'm a DC-based reloader. So I'm one of the people who worked on this course. I, I served as a fellow in Peru in 2008 and 2009. I want to give you a little bit of background for this course. Over the years, um, fellows have been asked to do 
more and more teacher training. And we, we wanted to support fellows in this and started thinking about a training of trainers course more than two years ago. As Joe mentioned, we originally designed the course for in-person fellows, but when the pandemic hit, we had to change our plans. We originally decided to, sorry, we decided to offer the course to the fellow and specialist alumni community, partly because we wanted to, to pilot the course, but also because we felt that it might be a useful professional development opportunity, even for our experienced and sophisticated alumni. Um, going forward, because fellows will be working virtually for the immediate future, we're adapting this course for this virtual environment. And in the long term, we are very much hoping that fellows will be able to return to the field and will run a course to support in-person teacher training. So um, in addition to congratulating everyone who, who really earned a certificate of completion, I, I want to thank our two absolutely stellar consultants and course designer, um, designers, Jennifer Borth and Tabitha Kidwell, as well as our cooperating partner, Georgetown University. Jennifer and Tabitha not only did amazing work uh, designing this course from the ground up, but they were infinitely flexible and responsive to our many, many requests for changes. They have been absolutely wonderful to work with and the quality of the course is testament to their very hard work and dedication, as well as their incredible sophistication as uh, course designers and TESOL professionals. So thank you very much indeed, Jennifer and Tabitha. Um, in addition to Jennifer and Tabitha, let me also thank all at Georgetown University, but especially the very amazing Amy Crompton. She has done absolutely amazing work on every aspect of the course, as well as coordinating all the very many moving pieces. And this course would not have been possible without her. So thank you, Amy Crompton. We very much appreciate you. Um, I'd like to ask the members of the team to introduce themselves, beginning with Jenny. Hi again, everyone. I'm Jenny Hodgson. I am the Global Program Officer for the English Language Fellow Program at the State Department. I was also an English Language Fellow in 2009 to 2010 in Togo um, and was just thrilled to work on this course. It's really been one of the joys of working on this program um, and we're so excited to hopefully someday launch it with new fellows. Over yeah. to Amy. Thank you, Amy. Hello everybody, I'm Amy Crompton. I'm the TESOL Project Senior Associate at English Language Programs. Um, I was also a fellow in the West Bank and Afghanistan from 2008 to 11. And it was also my absolute pleasure. I can't say more than what Jenny uh, and Ruth have already said. It's been um, such a great project and it's been lovely to really interact with all, with the community um, in such a great way. So um, back to Ruth. Thank you, Amy. Let me invite Jennifer and Tabitha to say a few words. Jennifer, you wanna go ahead? Sure, thank you. It's so great to see all of your familiar faces again. I feel like we spent the summer together. Um, I'm Jennifer Bork and I was a fellow in Morocco from 2016 to 2018 and I currently serve as the Education Program Coordinator for the U.S. Committee for Refugees and Immigrants in Vermont and I'm just thrilled to be here and to have seen the um, first iteration of this course through and the excitement in this community for making it happen and also for um, moving beyond workshops and talking a lot about one-on-one -on -one teacher training and professional learning networks. This whole group has become a real testament to the value of that. So thank you all. Thank you. Tabitha. Great. Thanks Ruth and Jennifer. So I'm Tabitha Kidwell. I was a fellow in Indonesia from 2011 to 2013 and I'm now a professor in the TESOL program at American University. It was really a pleasure to work on this course and reconnect with the fabulous alumni community. Um, and what I think is really notable about the course is that the community's enthusiasm really highlighted the importance of and the need for programs that prepare TESOL professionals to transition from teaching language to training teachers. Many of you guys said that you wished you had completed this course before your fellowship. And thanks to the feedback that you all gave us, we've been able to continue improving the course so that we can better prepare fellows for their work with teachers around the world. 
Thank you very much, Tabitha. So let me um, invite Amy to share with you all some of the, the interesting statistics from this course. Go ahead, Amy. Hi again. Um, we had an overwhelmingly positive response and interest in, in participating in this class from our, our community. We had 412 people registered, 360 former fellows and 126 specialists, with some of those being both alumni of both programs. Um, so to accommodate this great interest, we decided to have two cohorts of the course with nine sections, um, with about 45 participants in each section. Um, we had about 10, we had 10 facilitators to help with the implement, implementation of the course and those facilitators also deserve a very big thank you and virtual round of applause uh, from all, for all of their support and hard work. Um, they were especially critical in supporting the Monday Connect and Reflect Zoom calls. Uh, we hosted 30 of those calls uh, from the beginning of July through the end of August. That was five calls per co per, per cohort um, at three every Monday for the duration of the course with about 12 to 15 participants in attendance for each call. And finally, of those who registered, 221 participants completed the course successfully. So congratulations to all of you and please be on the lookout for your electronic certificate in your email in the coming week. Um, next slide, please. Yes. Yeah. Um, we had a wonderful, we had wonderful diversity of activities throughout the course, but the activity that generated the most discussion amongst participants was this one from Module 2, if you recall. Um, this activity seemed to resonate with the alumni community, as many of you related to the familiarity of this scenario based on your experiences as fellows and specialists, and you shared some wonderful and also humorous anecdotes about what happens when you jump in too quickly conducting workshops without first doing some sort of needs assessment. Um, next, we would like to uh, take some time to recognize some individual participants for their outstanding engagement in their section of the course. Over to you, Jennifer. Thanks, Amy. So all of your participation in this course was based on your engagement with the discussion boards for each activity throughout the course modules. And as facilitators, we really appreciated the time that you spent discussing the ideas um, presented in the course, and we thoroughly enjoyed reading and learning about how you use these ideas and how they connected to your own teacher training experiences as fellows and specialists around the world. In each cohort, we would like to recognize the most active participant. This is the participant who had the most participation or discussion board posts throughout the course. And before we do that big reveal, we would love for you to take a second and type into the chat bar your guess as to who was the most active participant in your section. Ooh, I see lots of names coming up. Carol Panero, Peter Edwards, Baba, Wendy, Gina. I'm glad to see it sounds like you got to know each other well and we're all on a first name basis. All right. Nick, let's do the big reveal for section 1A. Our most active participant for our section 1A was Jean Lundbaum with 108 participations. For section 1B, Sean Ryan with 107 participations. 1C, Martha Langling with 66 participations. And section 1D, we have Carol Pinero with 84 participations. And then later in the summer, we moved on to cohort number two. 2A, we have Candice Renault, who participated 104 times on discussion boards. In 2B, Barbara Williams Stoff, who participated 82 times throughout the course. In 2C, Julie Saris, who participated 65 times throughout the course. 2D, Gina Sharar, 
who participated a whopping 179 times. And finally, in 2E, we have Wendy Colson, who participated an even 100 times to fill us, finish us off. So thank you all for your fantastic participation throughout this summer. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. And thanks to all participants for your active engagement in the course. Now it's time for a poll. We identified a few favorite photos that you shared in your responses in the introdu introductory module, Task 2, Building Our Community. You were asked to post a photo of yourself with no description to inspire questions and conversations from our community. So for each photo in, in each poll, you'll have to select which country you think that that photo was taken in. You'll have 15 to 20 seconds to respond, then we'll share the poll results and reveal the correct answer. So let's get started with the first photo. Okay, this photo is, credit is due to Dan, Danielle Fisher. Where in the world is she? Philippines, East Timor, Sri Lanka, or Bangladesh? Okay, let's close the poll. <coughs> and the photo was taken in the Philippines, that's correct. While Danielle was actually a fellow in Vietnam, this photo was taken in the Philippines where she spent Christmas with some friends. Okay, ready for the next photo? Okay, where in the world is Kelly Donovan? Was she in Bahrain, Tajikistan, Mongolia, or Argentina? Okay, and the results, Mongolia, 58% of you, you are indeed correct. Kelly was a fellow in China, and this photo was taken during the China-Mongolia Fellows ELT Association of Mongolia Conference last year. All right, next photo. Okay, where in the world is Rebecca Gordon? Is she in... Oh. Rwanda, Kenya, Tanzania, or Uganda? Am I right? 46% of you said Uganda and you are correct. Rebecca was a fellow in Ethiopia and China, but this picture was taken at the Wildlife Center in Uganda. Um, her husband, Mark, who's also in the picture is from Uganda and they got a private tour from his cousin. Fun fact. Okay, next photo. Where in the world is Stephanie Rommel? Is she in Nepal, New Zealand, Kyrgyzstan or the good old USA? Okay, this one seemed to have stumped you. Um, this is actually New Zealand. Stephanie has been working at a university in New Zealand since she was a specialist in Columbia in 2015. Must go visit New Zealand. <laughs> okay, and the last photo. Where in the world is Amy Shermer? Was she in Iraq, Turkey, Egypt, or Jordan? That food looks very delicious. And it's dinner time here. <laughs> oh, 
Okay. This one also seemed to stump you. This photo, it's, it's kind of a trick photo because uh, she, she wasn't a fellow here. Amy was a fellow in Kosovo, but this photo was taken at a restaurant in the Green Zone in Iraq where she taught and trained Iraqi post-grad students for eight months. Wonderful. Um, you shared such wonderful photos, and I think we all really enjoyed that activity, getting to know you and trying to guess where in the world you were and what were you doing. And um, there's just so many great photos to choose from, but we had to choose five, so. Okay, um, also, as both cohorts came to a close, many of you expressed a desire to continue to connect with the professional learning network that came out of your participation in your course sections. As a result, we created a TOT alumni group on the COP 1.0. I say 1.0 because 2.0 is coming soon. We already have about 89 members. You can join by visiting the link that will be pasted in the chat and clicking on join the button on the right side uh, of the group title. Okay, uh, next slide. Within this group, once you join, you'll find two documents that contain the resources from the course. Uh, one is a document with resources, uh, links to videos, et cetera, that were part of the course itself. And the other document is the tremendous list of resources totaling 65 pages that you collectively shared on the discussion boards throughout the course. Um, so please, Go there, check it out. Um, it's a fantastic document and also still a work in progress. So, and speaking of new and exciting things on the COP, Tony Hall, our Associate Director, will give you a preview of what's to come with COP 2.0. <clears throat> Excuse me, thanks, Amy. Um, first, I wanna thank all of you because for the last couple of months, the COP 1.0 has been um, exceptionally busier just in, in people being on there and doing things, but also a lot of wonderful comments that you've left behind um, when you, you found a great resource. And, and that was really great to see. And I think the good times will continue when we move everything to COP 2.0. Uh, some of you, I've been looking at the list and I know I've been in focus groups or seen a survey or know that you received a survey in the last two or three years from us um, asking for your feedback about if we were to redesign the COP, what would you like to see there? And I'm happy to say we're, we're getting very, very close to launching it and hopefully you'll see a lot of your good suggestions um, have been applied. Um, everything that Amy's just been talking to you about will be brought over. Every comment, every document, every photo is going to be um, put into the COP 2.0 but in a very different um, uh, navigation. And it, it, it will function a lot more like social media and we're hoping that the result of that is going to be a much, a much friendlier environment for users, user-friendly, um, easier for you to follow content and themes and ideas and people that you're really excited about and interested in. A very, um, very rigorously designed tag system that we think will, will get the job done. Um, and we're really interested in, in making sure that you can make connections, as Amy mentioned. Um, you're, all, you're in a group now and that we won't have groups per se, but we're going to have a different way of, of finding people with great robust profiles that you'll be able to um, follow people and find people easily with. Um, and finally, we have revamped completely our, our resource, our library um, site, um, and you will find everything you want there and so much more. And we also hope you'll continue to contribute there. So be on the lookout in the next two, two to three weeks, we hope for announcements and um, lots of materials about how to become involved in COP 2.0. Thanks. Thank you, Tony and everyone. It's great to be here with you. I'm gonna talk about a few ways to stay involved, but first I'd like to briefly introduce myself. My name is Nick. Um, I'm an outreach coordinator of the English language programs and I work with alumni. I was recently a fellow myself for two years in Kiev, Ukraine, and I'm also a top graduate with you here today. I had so much fun in the program. I learned so much from all of you in there. Uh, even though it was challenging, I had to stay up at night and on the weekends and do a lot of work. So I, I am glad it's over. Too. But it doesn't end there. I'd like to highlight a couple ways we'd love to uh, stay connected with you. First, 
we have the alumni impact statement on the COP. I'm sure some of you have already submitted one, and this is a great way to kind of reflect on an aspect of your fellowship, kind of reminisce. It doesn't have to be overly formal. Uh, Amy is going to put a link for us in the chat now to the alumni impact statement stage uh, page, sorry, on the COP. Or we also have the blog posts, which is a way to kind of fill us in on what you've been up to post fellowship or specialist project. You know, for example, if you've run into alumni at conferences and so forth, we'd love to hear from you. And as Tony mentioned, the COP 2.0 is a very user-friendly, engaging platform. So I think you'll, you'll enjoy posting there. And we get a lot of comments and, and feedback from our community as well when we get impact statements. Conference season is upon us. You know, language programs has a full uh, schedule of virtual conferences that we'll be attending, and Amy will also help us out with that in the chat box. As well, we're including a way to apply. If, you, if you're going to be presenting at a virtual conference, you can apply for a virtual grant uh, and reflecting on your experience in the program or an aspect of your fellowship. Many of you have attended our online community events that we had launched since the uh, quarantine started, and we really value the community building, the your participation and leadership. So we uh, invite you and welcome you to continue joining us. Next Wednesday, we have coming up on the 16th, we're launching our View from the Real World series. And we're gonna start off with uh, Belgrade region. So that should be a good one. It's 12 noon Eastern time. Um, you can register on the COP. If you come across any job opportunities, Please feel free to post them on the COP. Of course, this is a challenging time in the job market. We welcome the, you know, supporting our community members with other jobs, or you can search there yourself if you're in need. We have a lot of good opportunities posted. The Alumni Ambassador Program is on pause for this cycle, this academic calendar, uh, but we absolutely would encourage the top participants to apply when we reopen that. Um, we obviously have so many strong uh, participants here in engaging engagement, and we would love to have you on board for that. In the meantime, you can uh, recruit future fellows by recommending any great colleagues or friends you have for the program. And of course, we're open to any other ideas or suggestions you might have for ways to stay involved. Uh, we love connecting with you. Of course, TOT was a great chance for all of us to build professional development and community. And I know it's a new time right now. We're all searching for ways uh, beyond Zoom to stay connected. So please feel free to reach out to us by email. I will now pass it back over to Tabitha to talk about uh, post-taught professional learning networks. Okay, thanks, Nick. So you guys probably remember that module five of the TOT focused on supporting professional learning networks. And the network that developed through this course is a great example of learning from and with colleagues. So even though the TOT course is over, the opportunity to continue learning from this community certainly is not. So we'd like to give everybody a chance to discuss that in a breakout room. So we'll put you in that room in a, in a moment. Um, we'd like you to please start by introducing yourself. So share your name, your fellow or specialist location, one thing you liked about the TOT and one way that it will change your practice. And then please discuss ways in which we can continue to strengthen the professional learning network and ways to stay involved in the TOT community. So after 10 minutes, please be prepared to share your ideas with the full group. Um, we'll be able to hear from a few groups um, orally, and then you can also share your ideas in the chat. So we'll see you guys back here in about 10 minutes. Some brief responses. You are very welcome and very encouraged to share those responses in the chat box once you scroll all the way down to the bottom again. Um, but it would be great to also hear from a handful of groups about what you guys talked about. What are some ways that we can continue to strengthen this professional learning network? And what are some ways that we can all continue to stay involved with the TOT community? So if you'd like to, I can't see everybody now all at once. Um, but if you would like to speak, you can raise your digital hand or just go ahead and unmute yourself. We'll figure it out. Hi, I'm Miriam. I'll just jump in because Frederick had a fantastic idea that maybe we could have a checkbox for our interest uh, areas in the COP and continue to focus or hone in on specific areas that we're really interested in following up on, whether that be assessment or PLNs or uh, 
the working with elementary school teachers, you know, what a regional interests, blah, blah, blah. But that would be like a pre-filter. And I thought that was a brilliant idea. And um, we all just reveled in the idea of having this network because after being a specialist or an elf coming back without that connection is really kind of horrible. <laughs> like we missed that. So this is really exciting. And also um, somehow plugging into being able to support people in the field more when the field starts opening up again. So. Yeah, so being engaged on the COP 2.0 and hopefully having some features there that will help us connect with each other um, or using whatever features we do have on there. All right. Can I just jump in and say that is an exciting feature of the new COP. Um, so there will be tags that you can follow. So when you log in, it's almost like Facebook and your feed will show you the things that you're following. You can also see everything, but you can follow. It's not just um, different parts of TESOL, but it's also regions, countries, things like that. So there's lots of different things that you can follow. So we're looking forward to seeing how you all like that. Great. So since Miriam was talking, we've had a few responses in the chat. We have um, Judy suggests continuing with the monthly Zoom conferences. Um, let's see, regularly posting on the COPTOT group definitely is a great way to stay in touch. Um, let's see, um, Martha suggests the possibility of study groups. Um, and the possibility of reading professional articles and sharing about those together is helpful. Heidi mentioned the Canvas platform um, could be a good uh, model for future teaching. Maybe a book club, a study group, book club. Everybody likes the book club. Start a book club. Um, is there somebody, uh, another group that would like to share orally that we, um, maybe we haven't heard some of the ideas you were discussing? Sure, I'll uh, jump in. I'll okay. go ahead. Oh no, go for it, you're first. Okay, uh, my name is Rafael and uh, our group actually talked about the fact how even with the COVID that occurred, you guys brought out this whole virtual program called a certification program. And we had a lot of expertise, a lot of talks and so forth with people. So we'd really like to see more where we can actually, um, well for me, I actually really enjoyed speaking to them and, and learning and it really was very helpful as being a new trainer of teachers even though i have trained a lot of teachers this was a wonderful format to follow so one of the big things i would love to do is also see the teachers that are part of this program actually do different areas of expertise so for instance i'm very good at classroom management but virtual classroom management uh, i made a lot of mistakes in that process but i did learn very quickly uh, how to manage my classroom <laughs> very very well and so i would love to share those ideas and have other people tell me what they do for virtual classroom management because what i'm seeing is unless you do it in a particular way, you're going to be a little overwhelmed with a lot of faces and not a lot of responses. So things like that would be very helpful, those kinds of topics and so forth. So we talked about other things as well, but that's, that's one thing I took away from it. All right. Thanks, Raphael. And there are definitely people in the chat saying that that would be helpful. So maybe coming together around specific topic discussion groups could be really helpful. Mary Catherine, you had another idea? Um, yeah, so in my group, the thing that I think all of us really enjoyed the most were the Zoom sessions, um, and specifically the Zoom sessions as a way of, of getting to know each other better, uh, because a lot of the times, even if we had a topic we were supposed to be talking about, we ended up just chatting. Could we have like, you know, cocktail nights or something on Zoom or, you know, like, baking club where everybody bakes the same thing on Zoom and just like really focus on the social connection through Zoom. Yeah, definitely more opportunities for connection, even if it's virtual connection and even if it's not professionally focused could be helpful. Is there one yep. more group that would like to share something y'all talked about? I would like to share please. Um, Betsy brought up something about the study group too, to continue our learning on these topics. And I think that would be a great idea to get different study groups together. Um, and maybe we could do that on the COP, huh? Absolutely. So um, that would be definitely a great venue to, if you're interested in a topic, just put out a message. I know that already this summer, um, 
Rachel Wang led a group on um, anti-racist pedagogy that a few of us participated in. So if you're interested, there is definitely an audience, even on C COP 1.0, I think that there can be an audience. It's a way to connect with people. Um, in the chat, people have also mentioned the possibility of having regional connection groups, or um, which would extend to fellows outside of the US as well. Um, and um, also asynchronous discussion groups as well for people who might be in different settings. So thanks to everybody for all of those great suggestions. I know that the fellow program and the outreach team will definitely take those into account and we'll see what we can do to support everybody in having those opportunities. So I'll turn it back over to Jenny. Thanks so much. I, we definitely took notes of everything that you just said. We are truly eager to keep this momentum going. This wasn't just an exercise. We are just so excited about how much enthusiasm there was in this course and the desire to have a community. So we're really excited about all these ideas. Please email us if you have other ideas um, and we will definitely think these through and see what we can do to keep the momentum going and stay engaged with you. Um, we look forward to seeing you on COP 1.0 and COP 2.0 and whatever else comes about in the next couple months. Um, we really, really want to thank you for participating in the course. Your feedback was, is going to be so incredibly important when we um, revamp the course for new fellows. And as um, our team mentioned, we are already revamping the course for our Hello, virtual. Sean. So it's all so much more than we ever imagined, and we're, we're incredibly thrilled about that. So thank you again. We really appreciate you. We appreciate this community. We miss you. We hope that we'll all be out of our houses soon and on to those amazing places that were in those photos and more. Um, so we'll talk to you soon. Thanks again, and we'll look forward to your certificates in the next week or so. Thank you, that was great. Bye, everyone.